cruising several nautical miles off the coast of Gi Wan, a symbol of America's commitment to one of its oldest friends in need of help. This is the USS George Washington, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that's now become a hub for the biggest humanitarian operation ever staged in the Philippines. I'll make room for the G2, I'll put three rhinos here. In the flight deck control room, Lieutenant Commander Ivan Borgia is coordinating aircraft that are making aid drops. Each helicopter would probably make about six drops per day. So with 15, 16 aircraft, times four, six, so it, it adds up. While up on the flag bridge, Rear Admiral Mark Montgomery watches his aircraft carrier operate with military precision. He is in command of this mini city and its five and a half thousand crew, along with nine other ships that are here to assist. And there's a core mission in the Navy and uh, you'll find the crew, I think, is really passionate about the, uh, the job they're getting to do here. And a good percentage of our crew, almost 10% are Filipino American, so there's a, a lot of um, belief and uh, heartfelt support for this mission on board. Historically, the U.S. has had a powerful role in the region since World War II. But with China's economic and military growth, it's had to reassure its dedication to its allies. If there was ever any question about America's commitment to the Asia-Pacific region, well, here is your answer. The sheer air power, number of personnel and depth of resources has certainly helped transform this relief operation. And it's fair to say without the USS George Washington, many Filipinos would still be suffering. As the fighter jets sit vacant on the four and a half acre flight deck, Ospreys and Seahawks work overtime, making urgent deliveries to some of the most remote and hard hit areas. Including this one, we've been invited to board. We're about to leave the USS George Washington aboard this Seahawk and it's heading to Northern Sibu to make an A drop. These boxes behind me are filled with goods from USAID. Now these guys make at least half a dozen drops a day. They work from sunrise to sunset. At the moment, we're racing against time to make the final delivery. We fly over the vast blue sea before hitting the coast, apocalyptic scenes beneath us. The crew is redirected to a small island that's been virtually wiped out. As they unload supplies, the survivors of Typhoon Haiyan emerge. With nothing left, they still manage to smile. Uh, it's amazing. This is, why, this is why we all join, to, to be a part of something like this so that we can help people. And uh, most of the time we get to do stuff that's pretty cool, but this is something that we really feel blessed to do this, to help. For however long it takes to rebuild, America says it's here for the long haul. Anna Corrin, CNN, off the coast of Giwan, the Philippines.